All right, so I'm giving myself 20 minutes to teach this. So your homework's 9-1, but it's not due until next Wednesday. So if you have issues with it, you can still come back on Tuesday. Because remember, we don't have school on Monday. You can still come back on Tuesday and ask me questions. I'm not going to make it due until Wednesday. So we have this runner. It is with great pleasure that we are joined today by one of the biggest star athletes around. The holder of the 100-meter track record and one of the fastest humans on the planet, let's all welcome Johnny Speedbump. Johnny? Johnny? Be right there. Made it. Say hello to Johnny Speedbump. Hi, Johnny. Hi, Johnny. This is the seventh stop I've made this morning. I was running a little late at the last school, but I'm so fast, I ran here faster than any other runner possibly could. Probably faster than any car or bus. I'm so fast, I could beat any of you in a race. Conceited means kind of like yeah, braggy, self-absorbed, like full of yourself, really confident. So Johnny says he shows up at this new track team. He says, "I'm going to challenge your top three runners. You can take five seconds off your time. You can take five seconds from your time, which is a lot in a hundred meter dash, and you still won't beat me." Johnny's hundred meter time is 9.95 seconds. What? He's crazy fast. That's pretty good, man. Wow. So, 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 how do we set that up? Because this is not an equation now. Johnny's saying my time will still be less than yours. So you've got space off to the right there on your notes. You want to put in words, I'm just going to put Johnny, I forget if, We'll leave in an H. Johnny has said that his time is less than anybody else. So we'll just say theirs, like their time. Make sure you use the proper form of their, T-H-E-I-R. But he also said he's not only faster than their time, he's faster than their time even after they take five seconds away from it. So then they would subtract five from their time, but Johnny's is still less. So then we can replace this, Johnny's time, but we know Johnny's time, so don't replace it with a variable, replace it with a constant, 9.95, that's his time, is less than their time. I don't like using T, but if I do, I use capital T minus the five. What would I do to solve for what their time must be for Johnny's statement to be true? Brennan? Um, add a 9.95. Which side is my variable on? So what I want to do is look at the right side. I want to get this by itself. So ask yourself, what's happening to it? So Thomas, what do you think we need to do? I think we need to add five. We need sides. to add five to both sides to isolate that T. Remember, T is being subtracted, so we add five to both sides. That will then give us 14.95 is less than T. Or if I turn this around to put my T first, I will have to turn around everything so T comes on the left. Now I flip my inequality symbol is greater than 14.95 seconds. So what he's saying is if his statement is true, their time must be more than 14.95. Now what was our trick that you guys should know from elementary to remember which number's bigger when we use the inequality symbol? Oh. Oh. The, yeah. the alligator mouth, your inequality symbol, wants to eat the bigger value. So that says this value is smaller than this one, or if I flip everything around, everything around, so we have to flip the inequality, T 
is greater than 14.95, or t is more than, or any way that you say larger than, more than, greater than, any of those ways. So solving inequalities when we have to use addition and subtraction is exactly like solving equations. The only dangerous part is, in an equation, we can flip it around and the equal sign stays, it looks the same even when I turn it around. The inequality sign does not stay the same when I flip the equation around. It also has to turn around. So we're gonna solve a couple more of these. I have on my timer 14 minutes left, but we might not even spend that whole time. So here's our intro to remind us on these different symbols. An inequality is a mathematical an sentence that uses so the less than, less than or equal to, sentence. greater than. I'm gonna capture this really quick and then we will pull up the rest of them. We have actually five different inequality symbols. We remember them by knowing the alligator method, but when we go to graph them, we have to think about what does it say? So here, how would I read this? X, my inequality symbol three, how would I read that? Cassidy? Um, X is less than three. X is less than three. So if I go to graph this, and this is on your paper, you're gonna wanna graph this. Notice that the dot on the three is open, and I went ahead and put on your paper why it's open. Could three be less than three? No. So 3 cannot be x. So when I go to graph it, I graph everything to the left of my 3 because any of these are true. If I look at 0, it's less than 3. If I look at negative 4, it's less than 3. And it keeps going forever, which is why we use the arrow at the end. So when we graph these, a lot of times when I ask you to shade, you can shade like that. But notice this changed now. Is that what you were going to point out? I went too far ahead. Here's my graph with the open circle because this is just less than. But when we put the other line under that inequality symbol, how do I read that when I put the line under it? Less than or equal to. Less than or equal to. So you've got both of those examples in your notes right here and right here, so you can remember if it doesn't have the line under it, it's just less than or greater than, depending on which way it points. If it does have the line under it, that little half of an equal sign, that tells me it's or equal to. Questions? I think a lot of this should be refresher from last year. So um, I'm going to jump to the key concept really quick to review all of our inequality symbols. The addition property of inequality states than or equal to and greater than or equal to. When we add something to both sides like we just saw in the warm-up, we have to add it to both sides and it stays the same inequality. If I subtract something from both sides, it stays the same inequality. Because look at this, if 3 is less than 7 and I add 2 to 3 and I add 2 to 7, that's like shifting both of them 2 up and still 5 is less than 9. I could add 14 or 1000 to both of them and it's still going to be true. Same rule when I subtract. No, I might need to orient starting to bother me. Try one more time. Apparently it's high. I'm trying to guess. There we go. Same rule for subtraction. If we have an inequality and I subtract from both sides, that will still remain true. So same as equations. If we add on one side, we add on the other side. If we subtract on one side, we subtract on the other side. Questions? I'm trying to move quick, but please do let me know if you have questions. Welcome to One of These Things Is Not Like The Others. Let's play.
one, two. So three, three of the statements the have the same solution. One Cross out the one two. statement that has a different so solution. N, now this is weird. Is no more than 25. What would it mean if something is no more than? Like if you have no more than $10. You have no more than. I got the same hands up that I've already had. No more than. Still the same hands up I've already had. Crystal, you think you might know? If you have no more than 25, how many could you have? You could have 25. So N might be equal to 25. But also, Layla? Yeah, you could have less than. So n is less than or equal to 25. <coughs> the next one, a number n is at most 25. Zach, will that be the same inequality or a different inequality? At most. Yeah, if it's at most, you could have 25 and you could have less, you can't have more. So this again is n is less than or equal to 25. Again, if you're confused, this is not on your notes. You're just watching right now, participating. You will work fewer than 25 hours this week. Luke? Yeah, you're gonna work less than fewer. Could I work 25? No, because you're working less than that. So that's n is less than. 25. That's our different one. And then if I look at the fourth one, n is a legal speed to travel in a 25 mile an hour zone. Can you go 25 in a 25 mile an hour zone? Yeah. yeah. And really, if you want to think about realistically, you can go a bit over, but not legally. Not legally. You can drive faster, but not legally. Yeah, All right, try round two on the back of your paper. I apologize that the notes printed a little weird. Round two got stuck on the bottom of this page, but you wanna to flip to the back. Write out those three, or sorry, those four. Three should match, and one will be different. So I just wanna... All right, let's see what challenge is behind curtain two. Three of the statements have the same solution. Cross out the one statement that has a different solution. This is shaded to the right, and your dot is filled in. So you might need to add like a squiggly so you can really see it. The third one down shades to the right. So the cost for internet starts at $30 a month. You traveled more than $30 or 30 miles yesterday. We have a graph about it and a number n is at least 30. What's it mean to be at least something? Like if I say I weigh at least 167 pounds, what's that really mean? Brennan? Um, like you're not going to be 167 pounds. Well, I might be. Or lower. I'm at least 167. Isaiah? Um, can you say 167 or over? Or over. I know I'm I'm either that weight or more. Like if I say I have at least 12 students per class, well, I that means I could have 12 or more. So, you do tell us. Cassidy, how did you write out the inequality for the first one here? Yeah, it, if it starts at $30, that means the cost will be either equal to 30 or more than 30. Hey, Thomas, can you pull your hands out so I know that you're right near us? Thanks, man. I know it's kind of cold. You traveled more than 30 miles yesterday. Isaiah, how'd you write that out? N is greater than 30. Could you have traveled 30 miles? 
If you traveled more than, then you couldn't have traveled 30. You traveled more than 30. What about my next one here, Divine? How'd you write out this as an inequality? Hmm? Thomas? Um, if 30, if C equals more than, if 30, more than C or equal equals. To. Yeah, I was about to say, you can't say equals more than, you can say is greater or equal to 30. Because notice, my 30 is filled in. And then I shade to the right, so it could be equal because it's filled in, or it's more because it goes to the right. Then a number n is at least 30, Karina. If something is at least less than or greater, less than or greater, you can't have both of those. What is it? Greater than or equal to. So the one I wrote in blue, this second one down here, that's your different one. Is this making sense when we try to evaluate what we see and then write it out as an inequality? Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Excuse, or yeah, bless you. I was going to say excuse you. You drank less than two and a half cups of water today, which is really bad. You should drink a lot more than that. But let's say D for drank. You drank less than two and a half cups of water today. Brennan, can you tell me how to write that out? Um, so we're going to start with D because that's my variable. Yeah, it, this tells you what to write. Uh, Drank, D, is less than two and a half. Yeah, you'll get dehydrated. Headache is one of the first signs of dehydration. I normally drink about two of these during the school day. Yeah, how quick your skin, yeah. Try. Try, because we're running out of time, try that example on your own. Q minus 2.2. We want to solve it and then graph our solution. So the first thing we do is work through it to solve When you it. solve an equation, you substitute your answer into the equation S is greater than or so equal to 7. The, same exact rules as an equal the number line shows the inequality S is greater than or equal to 7. I'm going to go ahead and related half equals two and half is greater minus four and one half is oh crap is this the one part two really there we go but I'm actually just going to pull your notes up we'll just run through the rest of your notes and then be done About two minutes. <laughs> Bela, what did you do to solve here? Um, yeah, exactly. Because we saw subtraction, we add 2.2 to both sides. That gave you what? not equal. You got to drop down the inequality sign. Q is greater than 16. So when I start graphing, where do I put my circle? On the 16. You always put your circle on that value. Is it open or shaded? Open because there's no equal sign. So we look here, there's no equal sign, so it's open. And then what direction do I shade if Q is greater than 16? Uh, to the right, the numbers that are bigger. And an arrow at the end. It's the same as what we've done with equations. Don't make it harder than it needs to be. So I want to give you guys the rest of the time to finish your masteries. 
So we will review the rest of this next week when we come back together again. Look at that, perfect timing. Thank you, sir. We will review the rest of this next week when we come back together. You can go ahead and try the homework. It's not due till next week, but if you have time, I would suggest that you go ahead and do the homework.